The last time I saw this man, we were in his kitchen entertaining a few people. Like a savvy veteran, I came through with like six bags of chips, multiple Gatorades, and some M&Ms. I was making sure everybody was hydrated while he was making sure the playlist was on point. Earlier in the evening, we were celebrating his return to Toronto as a Stanley Cup champion, and he was very generous to about 40 of us. This guy was so clutch in the 2018 NHL playoffs, scoring seven goals, including the biggest one of his career. By the way, this man scored in three straight Stanley Cup Finals games. Additionally, Game 5, series clinching, ties the game at three in the third period, setting the stage for his teammate Lars Ellers to score the game winner. From the Washington Capitals, I'm happy to be joined by Devontae Smith-Pelly. Welcome back to the Cabby Presents podcast, my dude. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously, I can't. We, there are no photos to show from the other day, but it was uh, it was a fun time. Yeah, we had a good time. We did. Uh, okay, I want to um, address the uh, elephant in the room. Uh, where did you get your tooth? Your tooth <laughs> Um It comes in and out. So um, I've had it for as long as I've known you. I've had it. I just never really wore it. Um, <laughs> okay, so this is not a new one. Because when I saw you no. the other day, I'm like, the tooth is bad. Yeah, yeah. Because I always rag you on on uh, I'll buy a text. I'm like, guy, get what are we doing about the tooth? Yeah, no, I've always had it. I just uh, I didn't wear it much um, before, but it's in now for the summer for sure. <laughs> Wait, then will at training camp will it pop? Will you just like all right? I'm just putting this yeah, back in the car. Well, no, or I, leaving it at the condo or whatever. Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't wear it to the rink or anything. But when I go back, whenever we go out and um, we go to nice cities, I I'll throw it in. <laughs> so Montreal gets the tooth. Vancouver is the tooth on the road. Or Vancouver, yeah, yeah, for sure. Vancouver, LA, LA, that yeah. whole trip. Uh, um, is there a Scott, Florida? Florida, yeah, yeah. In. Scottsdale. Yeah, oh yeah, the tooth's in there too. Um, <laughs> what about Dallas? Uh, yeah, yeah, the, the tooth's in there. It's hot. No, yeah. The but tooth's in there. but like the tooth stays home for like Minneapolis. And well, like... when we go to Minneapolis in like February, yeah, it stays at home. <laughs> um, couple of those, I don't want to offend any cities, but there's a couple. But those are the main ones that 100. <laughs> percent Wait, does the so wait to get the tooth? Does the does your union pay for the tooth, or do you have like a personal dentist? Like, do you go see Doctor Williams on Bloor Street, <laughs> um, Bloor Christie? I think I got this one. In Montreal, maybe. So, I guess they would have paid for it. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. When do you think Alex Ovechkin will ever get a, <laughs> a front tooth, a new tooth? Um, no, I think he's going toothless until I want to say forever. I don't think he'll ever. <laughs> I don't honestly I don't think he'll ever. It suits him. It's that's him. So he'll be toothless forever. I don't know if he even. I guess maybe as a rookie, he had the full. Or, I don't even. I'm, I, I trying, think, I'm trying to think of like. I think when he was a rookie, and I think maybe that year he got it knocked, knocked out. out, and then ever since then, I don't. Yeah, I can't even remember the. Have you ever that. seen him with like? No. Uh, two, no, it's always just no, like no, one. He, two. I don't think he has one of these ones. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you guys won the Stanley Cup, and congratulations Thank once you, again sure. in Las Vegas. I want to know about the Vegas stuff. Like <laughs> the rest of us, we saw the action on the ice, which was a compelling series. Mm -hmm. Uh, all that stuff, and um, and for some people, they were like going back and forth with the the Cavs and the Warriors. I'm not even. Did the Cavs and the Warriors series end before you got? You guys are. Uh, no, we 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 saw the end of the game four, so it was uh, it was a couple of days after. It was yeah, it was I think two or three days after it ended. Okay, so you guys, now I've I've only been able to, I actually been able to experience this twice, like staying at the rink, do some interviews, mm -hmm. and then. You know the the friends and family get to part. So yeah. I wanna I wanna know if the experience is 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 the same. So after you guys win, mm -hmm. you do your on ice interviews. Everybody gets their ch chance with the cup, and then you're, you're you told me your parents and your bro yeah. were, were there, yeah. right? So then they op they open up the room, and there's like another place in the in the stadium where people have drinks, and like the friends and the family they get to celebrate as well. Um, is that was that well, what, the case no, in Vegas? No, what we did is uh, we went into the room, the team. We like destroyed it. And, <laughs> and God, did you have goggles or no? No, no. I I I thought about it, but I didn't want to, you know, have them on deck already, and then we lose, and I gotta, you know, bring them home. And, fair, fair, fair. So, but what happened is, uh, so we went in the room. The families went home to the hotel, and we had a little reception there when we got At back. At the hotel, so, yeah. Oh, so we okay. went to the room. We were, you know, celebrating, and then went back for a little reception. But I mean, we were ready to go, so it's kind of like, hey, mom, hey, dad. Bro, what's up? 
we're, we got to go. We got to bust. <laughs> so uh, that's so what. How, how long was like? How long do you think you stayed at the reception for? You're, you're taking pictures with other people's families. Obviously, you were, you're taking photos with your own family. Yeah. Um, like ten minutes. Was it? Like uh, it wasn't that short. It, it was. I, had to have been only like thirty minutes, maybe. Do you eat at all? Um, Before you guys went no, I out, out, I did not eat. No, I, I had a slice of pizza. <laughs> in, in the room, was it a beer soaked slice of pizza? Nah, they they uh, separated them, but I had a, a slice just I knew because I knew I had to. But uh, other than that, I don't think I a little room service later, but I didn't eat. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of what kind of champagne did you guys have? Do you guys have champagne? Or was it just there was beer? champagne. Um, Do you I don't know what kind it was. No, I no. There was a year. Um, and I think I'm probably the reason why reporters can't go in the room anymore <laughs> is in in 08 Detroit won they beat Pittsburgh and they beat Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh and they had like the crappiest champagne yeah. and like I was like Kerbal I can't even I, I remember not recognizing the brand it wasn't mm-hmm. Dom P Moet Veuve like yeah, it wasn't yeah. one of those brands yeah. um, and then the following year when Pittsburgh won in Detroit. They had Vuv. They mm-hmm. had like I remember seeing the guys in the event level just carting through like big, like almost like trailers, not trailers, but like little um, wheelbarrows of of, uh, of champagne. So mm-hmm. I was wondering. And then sorry. And then in 2010, that was the other like, yeah, we're making sure this cabbie dude can't go in the friggin' room. <laughs> so at like Chris Versteeg, so the, the the Blackhawks beat the Flyers, and Versteeg came out. And he's like, you want, you want to come in the room? I'm like, yeah, of course I do. I, want, I need to shave this beard. I grew this this playoff beard a little bit thicker than yours, but yeah, not, yeah. not by too much. So then, and then one of the the, the league guys like, all right, well, the player's coming to grab you. So then I went and had like this little flip cam and then Bufflin and, and Taze. They took a couple of swipes at my beard and I eventually <laughs> got it shaved. But yeah. then I got, they, uh, I think it was just like Bud Lights. It was, I don't even remember there being champagne. I didn't get to stay in there long, but mm-hmm. they were mostly shirtless dudes and just a lot of celebration. Yeah. Was did your did your your shirt come off? Um, no, my shirt stayed on. I had the uh, Stanley Cup champ straight on, and I wore that. Um, it got destroyed by alcohol. <laughs> but, uh, did you get a new one at some point? Um, did you guys get one for the parade? Well, we were supposed to, we had one that we got, and then we had like an extra, but they both just got like soaked. So I don't know if I have I have one really anymore. It's gone. <laughs> and then okay, so after the reception, you say PC your mom. So what hotel were you guys staying? Were you guys staying at the Ritz? Um, the the Aria. Aria. That's where the team stayed. No, we were at the Mandarin Oriental. That's where. We were. Oh, okay. And the families were at the Aria. So, but we had it at the Mandarin. Um, the reception was there. Like, who's the guy on your team <clears throat> generally that like, if there's a team dinner or there's like a a function that's not like a team function, just like the boys. Yeah. Who's the guy that runs the team in that regard? Um, who's the player? There's the the three guys who most run it like Osh, Holtby, and uh, Willie. Those are the three Tom guys. Wilson? Yeah, um, those are the three guys who mostly set up uh, stuff on the road. And Vegas, I think um, I think our team services guy was already um, setting stuff up um, in case we won. So I, I think. Um, I mean, you're going to Vegas with a three-one lead. You guys like. On the plane or whatever, you got to, it's got to be like we gotta. Yeah. That, like, was there was there a conversation like we need to finish this here because this is be insane to win in Vegas. Yeah. That, yeah, we weren't getting too far ahead of ourselves, but you know, in the room, especially in the second intermission, it was like, all right, guys, like, we have to do this here now. Not only because I mean we're in Vegas, but you know you don't want to lose that game, and then something else happens, and then we want to finish it now here, and then uh, enjoy ourselves. Okay, so you guys, so after the the Mandarin, then where is where is the move? Like we've only we've only seen like you know Ovi hoisting the the Stanley Cup trophy. Tiesto is playing some horrible EDM music. <laughs> there are friggin' CO two cannon blasts in the club. What what club was that? That was uh, Hakkasan. Hakkasan yeah. isn't that that's not a, not a, a restaurant. No, I haven't been to Vegas in a few years. I've so. never been to Vegas. That was my first time partying in Vegas. Are you ever. kidding? Yeah. Oh, then everything else is gonna be like just such well, a letdown. Yeah. I'm, well, I don't think I'm gonna go back. Might yeah, not. actually, you don't need to. No, that but, was my first. It was. I couldn't believe that was my first time ever, and that was why it was crazy. Okay, so going out, did you guys wear like the suits? What did you wear when? Oh you no, 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 no. I we threw on, or I threw on, you know, my best. <laughs> <laughs> did anybody go out in a jersey wearing their jersey? Oh no, no. I, we did not need it. That's for sure. Everyone, uh, everyone was well aware of what was happening. Um, I mean, everyone knew what was going on. So, we didn't, no one needed to, you know, 
really, really show uh, who we were. Okay, obviously, well, yeah, and then, like, there's the <laughs> Phil or Mike is probably going with the cup. Mm-hmm. I, I know that, like, off the books, the captain gets to keep it for a few days. Mm-hmm. I mean, we saw Obi's, I mean, because of Instagram, like, we got to see, like, er- almost every move that the dude was making. Yeah. Not every but, you know, we we got to experience it along with Obi. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, uh, Hakusan. So then, like, are you guys... Like, do you guys have multiple boots? Are you guys right in the middle of the dance floor? Like, where are you in this? Uh, we were space? right behind the DJ. We were right behind Tiesto, and uh, we had, I think there's four booths back there or five. I think we had either three of them or four of them. So, um, two on one side, and then I think there's two on the other side of the stage. Yeah. And what time do you think you arrived at the club? I honestly couldn't even tell you. Um, I want to say around midnight, maybe. And then. And then what time did you leave the club? <laughs> Ooh, uh, five, four hours later, maybe. Oh, wow, that's a good night. <laughs> was it EDM all night, though? At, at one point, did you hear one Drake or Jay-Z record? Um, or Kanye well, record? Well, at a certain point, I couldn't hear. I didn't hear anything, so. I can't, yeah, you must have been. Yeah. yeah, actually, your hearing would just. So, you know, we enjoyed the start of when Tiesto came on, the start. And then um, after that, I mean, I wasn't really paying attention to the music. Got- Whose credit card do you, like, if you don't know, whose credit card do you think paid for that night? Uh, Mr. Lee owns this, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Was his son there with you guys? Uh, he might have been. <laughs> Guy. He might have been. You should have brought your goggles out to the club, because I'm yeah. sure at some point you were just, like, so far, just lights, yeah. music, adrenaline, euphoria, mm-hmm. girls, like, all that. Just, like, this is the gr- this is the greatest cocktail of a- entertainment yeah. imaginable. Yeah, it was it was a great night. I, I wish I had a GoPro on so I could, you know, uh, like, really... Relive it. Relive everything and maybe, like, uh, remember some stuff, but... <laughs> No, it was, was great, though. <laughs> were there any videos shared in the next, like, 48 hours or 72 hours about certain dudes, like, just really living up that moment? Um, there were. I'm not going to get into specifics, but there <laughs> Get into specifics. Dude, get into specifics. There were, That's uh, what we're here, my videos of guys, like you said, enjoying, enjoying themselves. Did anybody get lost? Like, was anybody like, yo, where is... I haven't um, seen so-and-so in 36 hours. Surprisingly, no. Um, you know, I think our bus was supposed to be at... 8.30, which turned into, like, 9, 9.30, but... Um, oh, 8, 9.30 to fly back to Washington yeah, the next day. Yeah, in the day. morning, yeah. So, I mean, some guys were late for that, and we were kind of wondering where they were, but everyone was accounted for. Guy, why do they... So then what time was your, like, your flight? Was that, like, 10 or 11? 10, yeah. I mean, it's a private thing, so you yeah, just whatever. Yeah, 10 or 10.30 or whatever. Okay, so your, your eyes are burning, because... <laughs> and the next day, you just smell, like, party, yeah. and... Maybe tequila, but like, so every, the plane is whatever. And then, so like, did you get any sleep on the plane or were you just like, were guys just telling stories? Like, oh my God, and then this part, and then okay. I began, so um, No, I think everyone was, didn't really sleep the night before, so the plane was... Quiet? There was storytelling, but then everyone slept because we knew that once we got back, we were going to go again. So <laughs> the smart thing to do is to get, <laughs> what is it, four and a half hour flight? So like four and a half hours of sleep and then... Um, we landed and we met again. So okay, you land. Do, do you guys go home? Like, let me shower up and change. Yeah, then, yeah. It's just right to the next yeah, spot. Yeah, everyone changed and then. Um, do we have a bus today? Yeah, and then we changed and then we had a bus and then we went down to uh, Georgetown by the water and that's where like Ovi and those guys jumped in the fountain. And, oh, so. was that the baseball game day or was that a different day? That was a that was a different day. Yeah, so that, this is the day we landed. We went home. Everyone, you know, showered, get ready, and then. Uh, we met at the Georgetown place, and then we had that whole day as well. Who was the most enthusiastic of your teammates, too? I mean, other than Alex Ovechkin, because that's just what we have seen, what we saw publicly. But mm-hmm. for a dude that you're with your 23, 24 brothers and, like, and you know, some guys, you've, you know, as, as you're in a family unit, some dudes are, like, everybody's best friend. Some guys are, like, the ticking time bomb. Some guys, it's, like, the super, like, into, I can't, like, the super positive guy. Some guys are, you know, a little bit more jaded or mm-hmm. whatever. Who was, like, the dude that was, like, the most enthusiastic, that we wouldn't have seen or we wouldn't Um, know? I'd say Osh. Oshi? Yeah. He's a, like, he's a happy, enthusiastic guy to begin with, but then add in, you know, winning the cup. I mean, he's been playing for 11, 12 years. Oh, yeah? So winning the cup for the first time, 
um, some beverages involved. So he was really <laughs> like, he's he's a happy go lucky guy to begin with, but just how happy he was to win and then celebrate with all of us. He was super enthusiastic. Okay, so you're in uh, you're in George. Did anybody else go in the water, or is it just Ovi in the in the? Uh, it was Ovi. I think I think Osh was in there. <laughs> um, I want to say Holtz. I, I don't know. There's there's a couple guys that, that jumped in there. Where'd you guys go that night? We went to a place called St. Eve's, I think that was that night. It's like a, a club or like a restaurant? Uh, no, it was, it's a club. Um, I think it was that night. Yeah, that was the St. Eve's night. And then um, the whole team was out that night, just the guys. And um, we had another good night. Good and then night. Whose, whose credit card was... And we never, we never saw, like, you know, like, I think <clears throat> it was Sagan the night that Boston won. Or even, like, and that was a huge bill. Yeah, I think yeah. it was 100 and something. Yeah. Over hundred grand, yeah. and when I believe the Dallas Mavericks won, they partied at Live mm-hmm. in Miami. It was like a incredible Hulk size bottle yeah. of champagne. Yeah, I believe yeah. was what came out that night. Okay, so night two in Georgetown, Saint Ives, whose card? Mister Leon, just I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I honestly, God, you're just like I'm just happy to be here. Hey. Like, yeah, hey, everybody, cool. So yeah. like, I'm not one of the highest paid guys, so I don't have to worry about it. It's like those guys will take care of it, or maybe the uh, you know the team fine fund will. We'll take care of it, or I don't know how they do it. When the check came, I was just... I was, I was like, yeah, man, I'm, yeah. I'm just... Oh, yeah, I, I, let me just... I get, the Uber's almost here. Yeah, let me yeah. just go Those get the Those guys Uber. can handle it, and if they need something from me, they can they can talk, uh, call me, and better than that... <laughs> and I'll send them a Venmo. Yeah, or like, yeah. yeah, you guys do interact, uh, interact transfers, <laughs> exactly. email transfers? Let me get you. I'm going to put something on it. Exactly. How much was in the, the team fine fund? Do you have any idea Ooh, what it got up to? It had to have been a, a decent amount, because... Um, like over 10, 10 Gs? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Twenty for sure. Gs, I would say closer to thirty, probably. When you joined Washington, you this was something that was already in place when you got there. Yeah, and was was the, this fine system similar to similar teams or your other teams that they have something similar like to this? This is the first time I've ever hearing I think this. Is league wide? Maybe I'm not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> Honestly. It's not friggin' what, the, like, New Orleans Saints, how the defensive coordinator, who I'm forgetting his name, he no, had, no, like, no. Bounty Gate, no, where, like, 10G, no. if you knock out the quarterback no, of the no. other team, you're getting, like, 10 G, like, month, like, <sighs> it's dudes nothing, are it's not like, Yeah, no, it's not, it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with anyone or anything like that. It's, it's win or lose, really. That's it. Luke Wilson, when he played for the Seattle Seahawks, he told me they're like the tight ends have a fine board, fine system, and then like the offensive players had mm-hmm. a fine system. And it was things like if you did something corny, like there were like marshals of like the fine system, mm-hmm. and there were I don't know the fine board. There's like twelve or fifteen things on his fine board. I can't remember some of the specifics, but it was really detailed about like how guys have you know built camaraderie, but how much they friggin' owed in this in this bucket, yeah. you know, to pay for team activities like the night at Saint Ives, Saint yeah. Ives or Saint Eves, Saint Eves. I want to say Eves. Yeah. Okay, so that's night two. Yeah, and then when is the baseball game? Is that the night night three? That was or day three? Yeah, day three was the baseball game. So. Did you know that Ovi was a lefty? I feel like the world discovered that no, Ovi was a lefty. No, I had no idea. No clue. Maybe he's a righty with that first throw. <laughs> I know. He might be right-handed. I, I mean, know. I don't do you, I wonder if he's ever thrown a baseball. Like, I mean, it's he grew up in Russia. Like, baseball's not a native sport to that part of the world. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I th- he's probably done the first pitch a couple times, so maybe that was like, oh. the second time doing it. Second time throwing something. And then how much did you guys ride him? Like, yo, am I, and my guy's like, yo, Mulligan, no, let me yeah, get that yeah. back. Let me get that no, back. The first one, I mean, I think if you see the view behind, we're all like, oh, God, that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> the second one was, was a lot better. Have you ever have you ever thrown out the first pitch? Uh, here? No, I haven't, no. So, okay, so then, like, you guys experience the game. I don't even know if the Nationals win that game. There's We've just, you know, see Ovi, hoi- like, at one point, he's just hoisting the cup in the booth, but the gameplay's going on, so the camera's not, I think he feels like the camera should be on him, but, like, there's yeah, actually yeah. game action, so they don't get to him until uh, until later. So then, after the baseball game, then what? This is all fascinating to me, um, by the way, and we would have had this conversation in your kitchen, yeah. but, you know, I was, I was too busy eating the food that I brought yeah. to the thing. Um... What do we do after? I think so guys kind of split up, I think, that day, and then other guys continued to go. Some guys went home and took a couple hours off, and then I think that night we – I can't remember the restaurant. Um, but we met there for dinner and then a um, couple drinks, and then we went out again. And where we went, I can't remember where we went. <laughs> 
trying to remember the name, but anyways, that's we again we met. most of the team or the whole team um, third night. Again, most of the team that night. Yeah, most of the team that night. Were you following, you know, Jacob Verano? Were you were you following his uh like well, obviously maybe not his Instagram, but his his little no. bender he was on? No. Well that's that's one thing. Like he's a young guy and you know, he likes to have fun like all of us, but he was uh you know, documenting like pretty much everything. So his his Instagram story in the morning, you'd wake up and the little the squares would be this small. It'd be like <laughs> all those little tags yeah, along the top. Yeah, so he was like forty two tags. Yeah, like documenting everything and um I think guys had to tell him, you know, chill out a little bit. But um no, he was just having fun and <laughs> no, he's a good guy. He's a good kid. Have you do you do you know his whereabouts? Right now? Uh no, I actually just talked to him, so he's home safe now. I where, think he's where, still having fun. Czech Republic. Oh, in the Czech Republic. Yeah. He's uh Shout out to Prague. Beautiful city. Yeah, never, beautiful women. Never been. I've heard I've heard he well, he tells me. Guy, this is the time to do your Euro trip. Well, I mean, now. I know it's you're late, training. It's late you, now, but I think next summer I'm gonna do try and do something like that. I it, I came back and like I wanted to go on a vacation and um everything was so tight and I got weddings and You got you know. dude, aren't you like twenty five years old? How old twenty four? Yeah, weddings, not mine. Yeah, but still, 26. your friends are getting married? 26, yeah. Yeah. Some of them. Hey, Kai, you couldn't get in the ears like, holy, my dude. Well, just I mean, some are my bit. age, some are older, than, like older than me, but um, hey, that's that's their choice, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> and then is the fourth day the parade? Or the fifth day the parade? Is there like a day mm-hmm. off? You guys uh, must have had a day off. No? I think the next that night, next night would have been... The day off, and then it was the parade. A day off for some guys, and then it was the parade. <laughs> was it a day off for you? No. <laughs> guys, so wait. When at what point does your family is still in Vegas? Do they just fly back to TO, or do they uh, join well, you in Washington DC? No, um, or Mr. Leon just flew the whole fam- all the families out, so they were going back to Washington. So they were at my place. So that was a weekend. So they were planning on staying. You know, if there was a game six oh, or anything. Oh, right. They're so, regardless. Okay, yeah, yeah. So they they were there at home for two days after. So they were just hanging, chilling while I was coming in and out whenever. <laughs> Guy, do you have, do you remember how many, like, either notifications or messages you had in the 12, 24 hours? Like, un, unread, because some of them you're yeah. going to check in. But then, like, do you remember what the number was? Like, what it got up to? Well, I don't, like, delete my text anyway. So, like, it was already a big number, but. Um, you never delete your text messages? No, no. Guy, what do you mean? I just have them there and open. Why don't you delete text messages? Well, if I need to go back and get something, then I can just find it easily rather than... Or if it's, say, me and you are texting and you're like, no, I didn't say that. Well, yeah, you did. I have it. <laughs> so, it's I just, the, I don't it's, know, that, it's, it's a, the collection of evidence that has me like, yo, why does people... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just a habit. And like, and I'm sure there's some like numbers with no names. They're yeah, just yeah. But that, so many. That's how I know who it is because they would have texted me before, and I scroll up and read, and then I'll remember who, why I was talking to that person before, and then I know who it is. So what is it, what is, what did the number get up to? Do you have any any idea? Um, I think when I looked before I started responding, it was up to like 800 something. But Holy but that's but I already dude. had compiled before something a lot. Uh, God, how's your neck, by the way? Oh, no, it's fine now. It is? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm, that night, was was it in the, um, the that Tampa, was the Tampa series? series? Yeah, game uh, game seven. So you, I get, and show the, do you get, you got hit, where exactly? Uh, like, it, it, like, hit my shoulder first and kind of, like, got caught in my jersey, and then it hit me, like, kind of the side of the neck-ish, and, like, kind of the top of my helmet, too, so, like, I had a little bump there for a while, it's gone now, though. So were you like in the next few days? Were you like you know when you have you sleep poorly and then you have like a neck strain and you have to like move your shoulders to move your head? <laughs> Did you have that as no, well? No, honestly, it was more just like the back of my head and neck hurt than anything. I did. I didn't really have like mobility issues, but just the spot where it actually hit me was like really sore. Oh man! Yeah. It looked brutal, and it's like I mean, hockey players. You guys are like the most courageous, the most fearless of the athletes because you're you're sliding in front of pucks that are traveling ninety to hundred miles an hour, yeah. and you're six feet away, and it's oh, no, it was dumb. But how, <laughs> <laughs> did you so when you that night did you just like 
like uh, ice pack. What what the, what form of treatment did you have in order to uh, yeah, be able ice, to sleep? Like massages, just to loosen it up. But honestly, how long like, you I, hurt it for? Was, a week? Uh, yeah, like a week, a weekish. Yeah, I mean it was it was fine. It wasn't. It looked worse than it felt. I mean, it hurt that that night, but after that, like it looked worse than it really, really was. Could you do this? Like, could you rotate your, oh, your no, shoulder? Oh yeah, I was fine. You it could was, do that. Yeah, it was no arm stuff. It was honestly mostly just like the impact of it Ugh. hitting me. It hurt more than anything. Um, since you live in the DC area, and I'm, and we're just talking about your phone, how much like how encrypted is your phone? I would feel okay. And the reason I ask this because I'm a like. A moderate conspiracy theorist mm-hmm. and then also just living in that part of the world like everybody is so monitored mm-hmm. and the first time I went to DC I saw planes I've never seen I've seen, like planes that I saw in the movies were actually in the air in the DC area I'm like yo I'm in a diff obviously a different country because I'm from Canada but mm-hmm. just in a different place yeah. like those helicopters with like like four helicopter blades that look yeah, like yeah, yeah. like a paddock flying in the air okay so are you one of those cats where you're like, yeah, I need a VPN on my phone, or I'm like, I'm just getting like, it's not just the retina scan, but it's the thumb, but like, should I do the retina scan because I'm here, because is my retina being scanned other places, my finger, like how much does that ever play into your mind because of where you, you work in uh, the United States? Yeah, I think about it a little bit, but I mean, I'm still buying the new iPhone every time it comes out, you know what I mean? Like, it's, I think about it, like, oh yeah, it's kind of crazy that they could scan my face, like... But no, I'm I'm still buying it, so it doesn't matter. I don't know. It's it's a fine line. How many how many burner social media accounts do you have? <laughs> Devante Colangelo. <laughs> uh, none. <laughs> God, when that story broke. Oh, that was crazy. Right? Insane. Do you read it on on the ringer? Yeah, yeah. I read all that, all the articles, and then so I saw all the tweets and. I mean, so they said it was his wife, right? And oh, well, he I said, think he said. It I was think his wife, his yeah, wife. he said it was his wife. Brian Colangelo said, and then I, or either his wife, like, well, because th- I think three of the burner accounts had his wife's phone number yeah, attached yeah. to the the Twitter accounts, and I think she, I think, took the bullet. But I'm like, yo, it's such a weird thing. It's like, like wifey's just out there to to, to take the brunt of the yeah. you know the the gunfire. Well, what so would to you speak. do? Would you say it was me or would you say oh, it was my her? God. <laughs> Because your job, you know you're going to get fired. Yeah. I mean, and it was, shout out to, the, I can't remember the writer of the Ringer article, but like the detective work, like going oh, yeah. back and cross-referencing. And then I sent an email to the, the Sixers, so then these three went dark yeah, of the yeah. day. Like, I was like, it was like reading a mystery. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, what would I do? Oh, my gosh. I don't, see, if you blame wifey, then you're having was, problems at home. What if it's her, though? But the information, like, how does wifey, you know what? Wifey by proxy is you anyway, so you have to take it. Because if you're at home talking about Jaleel Okafor and the contract negotiations or his health or Embiid's health, Mm -hmm. like sharing, you know, team secrets with your wife, which I understand because in in a marriage, you know, you're you're best friends. You share everything. But if that stuff goes public, Mm -hmm. it's like her words are like your words. Yeah. So I think you got to just take it. You got to man up. You're like, oh, <clears throat> all right, what do you guys, what do we got for severance? Yeah, 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 yeah. What no, would you do? No, I mean, I think you just, you have to take it, I think. His his uh, response, I don't think he, t- he, he said it was her, didn't he? Or I think, I think so. Like, yeah, it was I her. I think so. And then within, uh, well, I don't know, f- three days, three, four days, yeah, it was, was like, done. yeah, we split amicably or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I think you got to take. I mean, he was getting fired anyway, so at that point, you just got to take it. You think so? You think so? God, they went, they played Boston in like the second round. I don't think. No, no, getting... I'm, I'm saying. Oh, once because they, of it. Yeah. Like, oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. even I mean, they found they said it was her, and like no matter what he said, I think he was done anyway. So I feel like Sam Hinkie, the the old GM, was the was guy behind, that leaked it. it yeah. yeah, to the first place, I got at the guy from the Ringer, like, hey, listen, there's a, yeah. there's something suspicious about these five Twitter accounts, and then it's like, oh, wouldn't be surprised. That's that'd be good. How bizarre is it to you that hockey in some ways has become a little, uh, has a little bit of the TMZ effect when you see some of your peers like John Tavares and I guess Steven Stamkos a few years earlier where media outlets are camping out Mm -hmm. at CAA waiting to see what teams go in to pitch to get John Tavares. Like it feels very TMZ to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you experience it. Or, or if you're even aware that that's been happening. Um, no, no, I'm aware that's happening. But, I mean, if, if that's going to grow the game and make people more interested, if they're going to, you know, do that, 
and go that route to make it more interesting and make people like it more, then I'm all for it. That's interesting. I mean, like every summer, it feels like the NBA just dominates what yeah. the conversation is. Yeah. Because it's if it's not LeBron, where LeBron's going, then it's where's Kevin Durant going. And if it's not where Kevin Durant's going, what's going on with Kawhi Leonard? Where is LeBron going? Like mm-hmm. the, I mean, because the N- NBA elevates its stars, like it's, we're a star-driven league, much like all the en- other entertainment, music, movies, TV, et cetera. Yeah. So it's like, and you know, the... The pettiness in the NBA, I love. Like, yeah. I love all that gossip stuff. The rumor. I I, are you? I are love you, it. No, I love you it. love it too. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Just getting alerts it. on the phone, like memes on Bleacher Report or Basketball Forever, or what we do at Bar Down or whatever. Like, I love all that. The score, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, is it the same? Are you up on so the gossip? Not that it's, it's the same volume as the NBA, but are you still up on the gossip of what, what happens in your league? Um. There's uh, kind of, I guess, but you know, guys talk. I mean, guys know a lot of guys, so um, you know, word gets out of. I mean, if you want to call it gossip or whatever, but um, it's not as much as the NBA and not as public and not as fun, maybe. <laughs> right. Oh, congrats! By the way, resigning oh, with Washington. Thank you. Appreciate it. How long did that? Like, how long did those things take? Um, like, you guys ended your. Was you guys won the cup? Was Ju- was it June first? June seventh. June seventh is when. Yeah. Okay, and then so it's. Uh, no, it started talking like last week, and then um, you know the not qualifying came up, but we're still talking. That stuff's not wasn't that important, and then um, you know you get into the um, free agency period, the five six days where you can talk to other teams. So I was talking to other teams, and then you were. Yeah, and then um, there was just a decision to be made, and then so I just. Uh, Rather than wait it out, just go back to where where I'm happy. Same terms for the other teams, or were there other were there terms on the board like, all right, this is two years, or because um, you signed one year with Washington. Yeah, um, I guess. I'm not talking about money. I'm yeah, just saying, no, like, the, I guess it was the, I guess it was reported, but so, but there's uh you know two years on the table from places and um without getting the money wise, but I just went to you know where I was happy. Is the stuff that Certainly, because it, it involves you, you have a more of an interest in, with the stuff that you read of the past, you know, three four days. Like, was that any of that stuff accurate? That, um, like, was there anybody that's like, ah, these are the four or five teams? That no, I, I think was it was the to? reports were pretty vague, but they were like on the in the right path, I guess. So, um, yeah, they, they, I'm sure those people were talking to the right people, and then the most of those reports were relatively correct. Do you have any? Now, do you think that uh, recruiting is the same in the N- NHL as it is in the NBA? Um, By that I mean, like, famously, Kevin Durant posted up in the Hamptons. Mm-hmm. You know, or even even before that, DeAndre Jordan, I think, was at when the Clippers... Well, they kidnapped him, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Clippers reached out. I think Mark Cuban was, was he, like, at, outside yeah, of, like, Doc like Goon's house? His door or, or, so, or, or DeAndre's house yeah. trying to get in to, like, yo, to, you know, yeah. to offer the contract. So that was, I mean, that feels like a movie or a TV show. Yeah. With Kevin Durant, he goes to the Hamptons, Boston comes in, Miami mm-hmm. comes in, and obviously Golden State. And Golden State brings their five guys yeah, yeah. to the to the meeting. And they're called the Hampton Five as a result to to pitch like coming join their their team to stuff like that. Have you heard things like that or um, anything comparable in the NHL? I think it's like the same idea, but maybe not as you know big or extravagant. I mean, you see what's happening with the Bears; they're all going to his agency in LA, and um, I don't know if they're bringing players or anything, but everyone's pitching and stuff like that. So I would say for the high the higher end. Guys, I mean, when I don't think when's the last time a guy like Tavares even was a free agent, you know? So I think it was Stamkos was the yeah. was the last time of that yeah. that caliber. So I don't know what he did, but I know, where as in the NBA, every summer someone of that caliber is a free agent, so that's it's right. a little different. But um, I guess that's what they're doing for him, and but on obviously a little bit of a smaller smaller scale. I wonder if do you think guys would go like if you're I don't know. Some team that didn't have a particularly great season and mm-hmm. some big free agent uh, is on the market. And I know in the summertime, you guys, hockey dudes, like you guys literally are fishing at a cottage mm. or just working out somewhere. Like guys just disperse. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think that some of your guys, like players would, like it, say, say if uh, 
it was possible Tavares would join the the yeah. Washington Capitals. Well, I mean, they wouldn't send me, but um, no, if they, well, <laughs> if they, if they wanted me to go. You're a guy on, your, on, on multiple teams. Like, yeah. you're one of those great locker room or yeah. dressing room guys. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I would go. I mean, if it's going to help the team, make the team better, then yeah, why not? Would Ovi go? Um, if they asked him, and I mean, a guy like Tavares, I, I don't know. That's far. Moscow to L.A. <laughs> but I mean. Is that where I, he I'm is s- right now? I think he's home, yeah. He's, he's got to be at home by now, yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure, I mean, that he would do anything or call or whatever, but um, I wouldn't be opposed to it. And I think most guys would, if it's going to make the team better, I mean, most guys are, are going to go and, um, you know, help out. Do you do you know if there are ve- uh, Vegas odds about what may happen to the Stanley Cup when Ovi has it in, <laughs> the, in, in Russia? Are there Vegas? I, I feel like uh, they're probably like, will it get no, lost? There's, there's got to be. You well, can bet on anything, right? Uh, if, yeah, it, that's true. Um, will it? Will it be? You know, uh, broken in half. Broken lost. in half. I mean, you know, like, will Vladimir Putin like consume some beverage or food out of the Stanley Cup? That's probably like a <laughs> plus two hundred. Yeah. Or even like a minus one seventy five. Like, there's a good <laughs> chance that you know it will be at you know will will Ovi and Putin like pose in front of like that beautiful Kremlin building, you know, with like buddies, you know, arms <laughs> around each other. Yeah, that's gonna like, be like I don't. That's I, gonna be a party, right? That's gonna be a party. Guy, will you go to that? If I can, I will. <laughs> if I can, honestly. God, have you been to Russia before? Uh, no, I haven't. This is the time. Yeah. If there isn't if. Like there isn't a better time for you to go to Russia exactly. than to experience it with the Stanley Cup with the captain of the Washington Capitals. No, that's and, gonna be crazy. Oh, who told me? Uh, who was uh, Emery told me some wild stories about his time in Russia, like uh, well, basically yeah. lawless. And uh, <laughs> and then Wardle told me the story once, and I think he's told on his podcast. So just going to like a Russian party, mm-hmm. like in DC, mm-hmm. he's like, I didn't even know there's so many like Russian people. Yeah, in no, DC. yeah, they, those guys. Uh... Yeah, they have like they they have their little Russian air, uh, restaurants and bars and stuff, and I didn't I had no idea there was like a little community there. That's crazy. Have you experienced one of these nights? I haven't. No, I haven't. I think one of the team parties a couple years ago was at a Russian um, bar, and everyone seemed to like it. So I'm about to check it out. Guy, when do you get the cup? I get it August the sixth, the long weekend Monday. Guy. I know what you're gonna say. Have you thought about it? Uh, Can you guys make that happen? I'm trying. That would be sick. <laughs> oh my! That would be so sick. I'm trying. And I, you know, I wonder if the Migos even know what the Stanley Cup <laughs> is. No, definitely not. No, so, I'm, tr- I'm trying. That I'm would trying. be so dope. So the week that weekend is it's Carabana. In, in Toronto, which is this huge Caribbean festival, was going on for decades, and then Drake has carved out like the Monday, Sunday, Monday of Caravana Weekend to be like OVO Fest, and this year Drake and the Migos have two nights or three nights in Toronto. Maybe it's two nights. So, I mean, Drake has performed in Ottawa during the NHL All Star Weekend. I mean, growing up in Toronto, obviously you're affected by hockey, you mm-hmm. know, and it would be, and I don't even know if Drake's. Oh no! You know what? I think Dave Bolin brought the cup to a recording studio really? when he won in Chicago, either in ten or thirteen. Mm-hmm. I think he was on the team in thirteen before coming to the Leafs. I did see like a blurry photo, like because Bolin, one of Bolin's best friends, this guy Drex, uh, runs all is the CFO of OVO. Um, but anyway, but to have it on stage, like people would lose their. If oh. like that, and I don't know if it's at, uh, um, I think it's at it's amphitheater. amphitheater. Yeah, I think so. Which is the perfect venue for OVO. Anyway, if that happens, I hope it happens. That would be oh. so, so sick. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm trying. I don't uh, know how, but I'm going to see if I can make it work. Sick. And that's the, that's the time you had. Oh, it'd be so dope. Kanye rolls out five albums from this music, this, um, Meeting of the minds that he had in Wyoming. I'm not sure how long he was there for, but it's, uh, you know, Pusha T's album comes out first, then Kanye's album, then Kid Cudi, then Nas, then Tiana Taylor. Of those five, which one, which album did you give the most spins to? Um, <clears throat> I'd say 
probably the Kanye one. The other ones are kind of fairly new, right? Um, Tiana Taylor just came out. T- yeah, Tiana Taylor, yeah. And then... Uh, Kanye's not- verse on the song called Hurry is so funny. And I love, like, I do like when he gets flagrant. And yeah. I know how people, Kanye has divided us as people, like, into, like, can you separate someone uh, who art from the artist or can you not? And then, like, the, some of the flagrant things he said on TMZ, just like, oh, it's, like, yeah. almost unforgivable. But when it comes to the music, you were, you, that that's one that you played. Yeah, for. I played it the most, probably. But, yeah, the things that, the things that he was, was saying at TMZ, I don't know, kind of, like, because I really like Kanye before. Me too. His music. Man. Me too. And I, I mean, I still, the album's still, you know, pretty good. I don't mind it, but it's tough to, it's tough to separate. Yeah, I, I try to. Um, and then I was just like, oh, I mean, does Kanye actually know? Does he have the historical information? Like, or is he in just such a little bubble that he's like, oh, I mean, I'm not trying to read books. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm wearing a MAGA hat because I want to rebrand. I want to repurpose him. Like, no, man, it's just whatever. And and then, you know, it's it's like, yeah, it's like <coughs> who's in his circle? And then, like, how much reading is he doing? And then, yeah. you know. Um, and then it's like, do we, you know, these guys are artists. Like, should we be, should we... Um, have so much gravity to what they say or or, or, uh, revere them in certain ways for stuff outside of their art. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then he said some very profound things in the past. Jesus walks and other records like, Oh man, like anyway, it's, it's It's a, it's a thing that every, every person that likes Kanye has to sort of have this internal dialogue and like, what am am I going to support? I'm like, yo, you lost me dude. And it's going to take a long time to regain my trust and and get that back. It's tough. I'm, I'm having a hard time with it for sure. Did you uh, listen to the, the Cuddy record or, and the Nas and the Tiana Taylor? Um, Cuddy a little bit, meh, to me, to me. Um, Nas, no. <laughs> Tiana, Nas is Tiana as old Taylor. as your dad. Yeah. Like that's that's my dad's music. Which Nas, is, which is fine, <laughs> sure, but sure, just not for me. Um, Tiana Taylor, I listened to a little bit of it, but then I think she came out and said that's not even her real album or something. They're re-releasing. Did she? It. Yeah, I think. Oh, I, I don't want to uh, like misquote, but I think I'm pretty sure she said like someone had to tell her that her album was out. She wasn't, and then she heard it, and it wasn't the same one or something like that. Really? Yeah, I think they're what a disconnect between like what you did uh, in the studio and then what comes out publicly. Yeah, I think they're. I want to say they're re-releasing it tomorrow, and that's the one that I guess she originally. Really? I think I, th- I thought it was pretty. It's very sexy. I like it. Like she's like re- like freeway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, what was another one? Um, well, the name of the song that you can't <laughs> probably can't say that one. Yes, uh, uh, not PTF. What was it? Uh, WTP or WPT or TP? Anyway, yeah. You know it. Yeah, it's yeah. an acronym. It's an acronym. <laughs> and P is in there. So, yeah, use your imaginations. <laughs> this month of June has been incredible for music. You get a surprise J and Beyonce record. You get a Kanye record. You get a Nas record. You get a Drake double album. Like, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know if, you know, I'd have to go back and, and look, but this month five six week period and you get the drake push a t beef it's just been amazing like yeah. it's it's music almost has supplanted the nba as far as gossip goes like who knew drake had a kid yeah no <laughs> like when life of Addy dog came out we're like what yeah like we're all just like blown and you know and i i can't you know i can't wait to hear what uh what's on uh scorpion this is being recorded before scorpion drops mm-hmm. but it's going to be it's gonna be pretty sick. So, guy, like, how much time do you have before you got to be back in the gym, doing friggin' leg days, explosive <laughs> drills? You're running the ladder. You're doing all these core. You're throwing the medicine ball against the the wall. Battle ropes. Like, um, has that st- when? Like, how many days or how many weeks off do you get before you're back to 100? percent Well, it's been like what three three weeks now, almost four. So, I think after this long weekend, um, I'll be back and. Back in full mode. And you are you one of those dudes that like trains at seven, eight, or nine o'clock in the morning? Like you train uh, first yeah. thing and then you have the rest yeah, of the day to recover? Um, yeah, probably at like eight, I think. So are you training in the city? Yeah. At uh St. Mike's. So you do you work with Matt Nickel and, and, and Gary okay, yeah. right. And Gary Roberts, like yeah, the so, biosteel guys. Yeah. So yeah, I'll have this long weekend and then that'll, that'll be it. How long do you do you think the hangover is gonna last? <laughs> like the, the the championship hangover. Um, not as nah. far as your actual consumption of adult beverages, but yeah. like into the season because yeah. it takes a while for a guy, you know, f- for the motor to kick back in and yeah. get fire on all uh, again. I don't know. 
it's tough to say. I mean, like our team is so fun and we like enjoy playing for each other and with each other that, I mean, you know, once we get back, I think it'll be, you know, we'll be back to normal. And, and now that we've had that taste and how much fun like it was, I think guys are going to be like, all right, well, let's try and do it again. Oh, it's so hard, bro. Yeah. Like, it's I, hard, I know but, Pittsburgh did it more like recently. Yeah. And I think they were the last team actually, or yeah, they may, or no, maybe the Red Wings. No, maybe it was Pittsburgh was the last that, team. Uh, the, to go back to back. I, I can't, I can't remember. But yeah, I think it was so much fun, like, that I think guys, <clears throat> once we get over that, you know, championship hangover or whatever, we'll be like, all right, like, let's, let's do that again. Cause that, this last three weeks have been really good. <laughs> <laughs> Devontae Smith Pelly, this is a pleasure. It's always, it's awesome uh, catching up with you. And it was amazing to watch you produce come through like such huge clutch moments for the Capitals. And, and it's also kind of awesome. To hear how like, like ESPN, like certain per- personalities on ESPN, like mm-hmm. yo, they got a brother on the team, yeah, like yeah. The brother. Like I remember hearing uh, not Stephen A, but uh, Bomani saying, yeah, I don't know Devonte. Like this, it, like it was almost like people were surprised that there's a uh, that there was a brother on on Washington, mm-hmm. but also it took like such delight in, yeah. in saying your name and like and like as a kind of a point of pride that like yes. And not only were you on the team, but you were a, a, a critical member. You were you had uh, great production. So, congrats on that, my dude. Appreciate um, it. Enjoy the cup. Have you picked out the cereal that you're going to eat out of the Stanley Cup yet? <laughs> um, I haven't, but I don't know if I'm going to eat cereal. I, we're going to. I haven't decided what I'm going to do, but um, something oxtail? will be considered. <laughs> Imagine, like there'll be only t- oxtail. Oh, I would or- love to see the uh, look on the cup guys' faces when they. <laughs> Oh, they seem way worse. Uh, yeah. Oh my god, they seem way worse. Yeah. Hopefully, the, you get Mike. If you get Mike, because there's a three guys who go to the cup. Yeah, yeah. Mike is the best storyteller. Is he? Oh, you want yeah. Mike? No, I want to hear. I want to hear some of those stories. I'm sure they've seen a lot, but um, I haven't decided. But something's gonna get consumed out of it. Maybe beverages. I don't know. That a boy. Okay. Good luck with uh, training. Enjoy your summer, my dude. Appreciate and it. I'll see you at some point. And thanks again for coming in and being on the Cabin Presents podcast. Thank you. Thanks for the Gatorade and the chips <laughs> and the M&M. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>